about our Wave 1 Gold reciprocating root canal system. Um, my name is Jackie van Herk, and I will be your technical host for today. Our speaker is Dr. Perto. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the Q&A in the bottom of your screen. You can also ask them in the chat if you cannot find this. Uh, for now, I, I wish you a nice webinar and good luck to Dr. Perto. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, uh, thank you all, and uh, I want to thank Jackie. I want to also thank uh, Michel Dijon for organizing this today. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be able to talk to you, even though it's, uh, it's uh, on a screen. Uh, hopefully, we can travel again very soon and we're able to see each other. It has been like more than two years now doing uh, lectures and webinars. So anyway, today what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you about uh, a root canal system for shaping root canals. Uh, you probably heard about it. We have one gold system reciprocating what was called at that point in time single file reciprocating system. And we'll see what's that about. Uh, basically, two things about the lecture. The first thing is talking about the movement as reciprocating, the reciprocating movement, and what are the advantages and the conveniences of that movement. And second, talking about the system. Because, and you'll see basically the movement, the reciprocating movement is a very interesting movement. Per se, it's very interesting movement for almost any file on the market. And any file on the market can be used during reciprocation, given that you know what the angles are. But we'll discuss this during, during this uh, small webinar, small lecture. Uh, just to uh, let you know, uh, I've been involved since the beginning, in fact. We started working at that time with Densply uh, uh, to, to develop uh, reciprocating systems. We started uh, in 2007, 2008 working on uh, single file reciprocating systems with, uh, with a team of eight, eight people. At that time, of course, Gassan Yarid was involved. And uh, after a few, a few years, I would say, uh, we were split up in, in two teams and we continued developing the Wave 1 Gold while Gassan went over to continue developing uh, Reciproc Blue and other systems. But basically, we're all part of the same, of the same family. And, uh, on uh, Wave 1 Gold System, the people involved in development of Wave 1 Gold System, you will find uh, Cliff Ruddle, you will find Sergio Cutler, you will find Julian Weber from the UK and myself. So the four of us worked on the development and uh, bringing up to the market this, this file system. And uh, so I don't know if, if you had my, if you have my, my curriculum, but basically uh, I'm not going to do all the history, but uh, I have my private practice today in Paris. And uh, I've been doing anatomics for the past uh, 30 years, 31 years, in fact. And uh, this is the system I use on a daily basis every single day. And usually what I tell the people is I talk about something because I'm convinced about it and I'll show you the results. And anybody is uh, more than welcome. You see my email address on the screen in front of you, underbertot at aol.com. Uh, send me an email. Uh, whenever you wish to spend a couple of days with me at the practice, uh, I would be more than uh, more than happy to host you here. Uh, I do it for free. Most of my friends tell me you're crazy. You should make people pay. I don't make people pay. Uh, if you wish to come and spend half a day, one day with me at the uh, the practice and see how uh, an Atlantic practice is run in Paris, because we don't run the same practices uh, at the same time and in every country the same way. We don't have the same cases. Anyway, we, we can discuss this. So you're more than happy and I'll be more than happy to, to, to host you here and just to see how, how I work and which files I work with on a daily basis. So uh, I've got now more than 10 years experience on reciprocation on different file systems, of course, also rotary systems. We can discuss about whatever you like. A very, very quickly, a few cases because, because it's, this is what it's all about at the end of the day. We need to treat patients. And uh, these file, this, uh, this is one of the cases that was done with the, with the reciprocating uh, wave one gold file. This is immediate post-operative on this case, which had a pulpitis under an old crown. And this is after the new crown was made. And this is a three or four years post-operative. Uh, that's another case with a necrosis under this bridge. This is the immediate post-operative. And uh, this is the healing. Uh, just very quickly, all of the cases you see are also filled using warm vertical compaction of Gutta Persia. 
If you wish, we can discuss also a little bit at the end between lateral condensation, work condensation, uh, bioceramics, doing single cone. But this is not the topic today, but just to let you know, uh, I was trained when I did my postgraduate in endodontics in 88, 89, doing warm vertical compaction. I came out from dental school and I was taught in dental school to do lateral condensation, cold lateral. During my postgrad, I learned to do vertical and I've been doing vertical compaction of warm beta persia since then. So 30 plus years. And uh, these are the first cases. That, that is one of the first cases I've done 10 years ago using reciprocation. At that time, it was done with the wave one, initial wave one system back in 2011. So 10 years ago. And uh, this is uh, the immediate post-operative. This is the uh, six month follow up with the temporary crown. And this is a two years follow up. Uh, I, you know, as I do, that it's very difficult to have follow ups for a long term on, on, on patients. I have a few of them, but this is not the point today. Uh, I have some follow-ups up to 10, 15 years on some patients because they, they keep coming back. They keep having pulpitis. That's a good thing. Uh, just kidding. Now, let's uh, discuss, uh, discuss about the treatment using wave one gold system. What do we look at when we, when we, 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 we need to learn a new system? Uh, the first thing we're going to look at, of course, uh, we need to have good results, but also we need to have a good result uh, in unexperienced hand. And also what we need is to have a short learning curve. And this is the, the, this is the key point when you develop a system, when you talk about a system. We don't want to have a compromise on the final quality of the treatment, but if we have a great system, if we have a great file giving great results, but it takes you like three years uh, to be efficient with that file, this is something that's gonna be very, very difficult to, to work with. So the first question is, is it easy to learn? Is it easy to use? Is it safe when you use it? Is it efficient when you use it? When we talk about efficiency, we talk about the final result of the preparation and the shape we get into the canals. And of course, at the end, is it cost effective? Because also we treat patient, but it's also about cost. And we know that when we discuss with, uh, with dentists and with colleagues, they will discuss about cost, saying an instrument is expensive, not expensive. And if you wish, we can discuss about that also uh, during the lecture. So if we talk about the, the way uh, to learn this file, is it easy to learn? Many studies have been done in the past years now about the preference, for example, for unexperienced, uh, unexperienced uh, uh, users, students in dental clinics, students during hands-on, in which we give them a first experience between stainless steel hand file, stainless steel hand files, nickel titanium hand files, rotary hand files, reciprocating hand files. Uh, well, it's no surprise that most of the students will like and prefer a mechanical preparation versus the hand, the old hand preparation. So uh, this is what I was taught, in fact, you know, like spent hours and hours taking a file and reaming into a canal. And so uh, it's not really, uh, a surprise to find that most of the people prefer mechanical nickel titanium files and most of the mechanical file users will going to are going to prefer reciprocating files single file versus uh, rotary files uh, this is what was shown in that study uh, another study uh, in uh, clinical assessment on patients this time and same results in fact most of the people liked to work with mechanical files and the final results in terms of keeping, maintaining the canal shapes, avoiding ledgings, avoiding a uh, canal blockade, avoiding all these issues, uh, they had a better technical results when they were using uh, nickel titanium reciprocating file. Uh, if we uh, take a look, for example, this is, this is another case that was done uh, uh, and this is an interesting case I would like to talk to you about because I feel always uncomfortable about talking only about files because I don't believe that files are the main issue in uh, endodontic treatments. Of course, uh, some files are easier than others. Some files will give you an easier result, et cetera, et cetera. But if we talk about this first upper molar, the most difficult thing 
of course, will be the root canals because we have curvatures and we can see we have curvatures. But the most difficult things in those, in those cases will be to find all the canals first and make a good access and access all the canals and do not, and without blocking the canals in the initial steps of the, uh, of the, of the preparation. So uh, that case also was done using a reciprocating file. You see all the importance of irrigation. And basically a root canal system is efficient whenever it allows you to shape the canals properly without blockade, without ledging, without canal transportation. And it allows you to get enough irrigation down there so you're able to clean. As you can see on the palatal canal, these lateral canals, you see on the mesial canal, this little uh, lateral canal in the furcation with the curvature of the canals that are completely maintained. Uh, now let's go and take a look about what is interesting in the reciprocating movement versus continuous rotation. Uh, when we talk about a system, a rotary system, nickel titanium, I've been teaching nickel titanium since the 90s, when uh, the first files came on the market with, uh, with profiles at that time. We had three systems on the market at that time. We had the profile, we had the Quantec, and we had the Hero 642, for those uh, who still remember this system, Hero 642 from Micromega. And if you take most of the studies about nickel titanium, the first thing that comes up that what don't you like about nickel titanium? What is going to scare you about nickel titanium? Most dentists will tell you fractures. We're afraid about fractures because it fractures easier than, nickel than stainless steel files. So let's talk about files, for example, if we discuss about fractures between reciprocating and continuous rotation. You have basically two kinds of fractures, the fracture by torsional load, and I will elaborate on this in a minute, the fracture by cyclic fatigue, then what we have is uh, going to take a look at canal shapes and canal transportation. What's the difference between reciprocation and continuous rotation? The debris extrusion issue, the micro crack issue in the root, and cleaning and disinfection. All these points in the past 10 years have been extensively studied and they have been extensively published on. And uh, we're going to take a look very quickly in all this. I'm not going to do all the literature, but at least I will give you uh, a glimpse on and a resume. In fact, I will give you a summary about everything that was found during on on, uh, uh, on these different topics. First thing, fracture by torsional load. And let's talk about fracture and how do we fracture a file. This is torsional load. Torsional load fracture is when a file is blocked and you push on the file and the file is going to deform first and then the file is going to break. This is a machine that you see that is called a torque meter. This machine, you take the tip of the file and block it on one extremity of the machine. The second, uh, the second part of the file will rotate on itself. And then you can rotate this file until it breaks. And so you will have, uh, then you will have measurements on first the degree to failure, which means how many degrees the file will rotate upon, its, about its, upon itself before break, breakage, uh, knowing that, of course, if you have 300, 360 degrees, it means that you have a full rotation before fracture. And also, it will give you the torque to failure, how many, what is the stress, uh, briefly, what is the stress necessary to break the file. So this is torque issues. When we discuss about reciprocation, if you take a look at the number of degrees to failure, you will see that we, the variation here is on the uh, left, on the screen, you have 367 degree, which is a little bit more than one full rotation. And it can go up to 528 degrees, okay? Which is a little bit more than a full rotation of the file before it breaks. If you use a file that is rotating at 300 RPM, Keep in mind that this file rotating at 300 RPM is rotating and doing and spinning like five full rotation, five rotations per second. You do the math, 300 RPM is equivalent to five complete rotations per second, five times 360 per second, which means that if you block the tip of the file, if you block the tip of the file, 
And if the file, let's say, is going like 528 degrees or 600 degrees or 700 degrees before breakage, it wouldn't make a difference in reality because the file will break very quickly in a fraction of a second. And of course, the, uh, the more the speed is important and uh, the faster the file will break if you block the tip. This is if you're using full rotation. If you are using reciprocation, you can do the testing on any system, any file on the market. It will give you the number of degrees before the file is going to break, and you will block the system. When you do reciprocation, reciprocation is just an unequal clockwise, counterclockwise, or counterclockwise, clockwise movement that you predetermine. So let's say that this file will break minimum at 367 degrees, uh, 76 degrees, for example. So what we will do is we will block rotation, let's say at 150. So the file will go 150 and go back, 150 and go back, 150 and go back. So doing so, you will never reach the amount of degrees necessary to break the file. So in that aspect, doing reciprocation with preset files, with preset angle, allows you to really be safe on the side of torsional load fracture. Now, when you take a look at some studies, that, was, that study was published in 2016. This wave on gold is very safe concerning uh, torsional load, okay? And you understand why it is interesting. Second thing is cyclic fatigue fracture. This cyclic fatigue, cyclic fatigue is when the file Okay. Cyclic fatigue is when you rotate the file in a curve and stress is accumulating into the metal mass and the main difference here, the torsional load, is that you don't have any pressure on the file and you see that the file is going to break because the file is accumulating cycles of compression tensions and cycles of stress. And this stress is building up into the file. And the main difference between torsional load and cyclic fatigue is in cyclic fatigue, the file uh, do not need any pressure to break, just rotation in a curve. And second, you don't have any permanent deformation that you can check. So when you are working on a clinical case, sometimes it happens, you push too hard on the file, you remove it, and it is unwinded. When the file is unwinded, deformed, this is torsional load, okay? It has nothing to do with cyclic fatigue, even though they are interconnected, but you have an influence from one on the other. But basically, when you remove a file and you're lucky enough that the file did not break and you see that the file is unwinded and deformed, you know that the file, this is torsional load, okay? So the file un underwent a lot of torsional load, not enough to fracture, but enough to deform it. And then next step will be fracture. Cyclic fatigue, the file is building up stresses and it will break like a glass without any previous sign of deformation. And this will happen when you work in a file once, twice, three times, four, four times, and you never know how much cyclic fatigue is building up in a file. So at the end of the day, the file is going to break, okay? So this is the definition of cyclic fatigue. All the studies that were published since 2010, since 2010, all the studies have shown that whenever you use reciprocation, you extend the working life of the files. All these, all the studies agree on this. There is, you know, when you take uh, when you take a topic in literature and you take a look at that topic, you can find everything and the opposite. Okay, you will find some studies showing that are for something. You will find studies against something. Okay, the same thing, and you can have conflicting results. This is one of the only topics in the endodontic literature on which there is no argument about, you know, and all the studies in the past 10 years and all the studies that are keep coming out, which are in my opinion, totally useless today because we know what we already know. So we don't need to continue doing the same studies. Uh, all the cyclic fatigue studies have shown 
that we have longer time, longer life with any file if it's used in reciprocation versus continuous rotation. Now, there is some uh, issues about the systems that were used because we're not going into the different uh, phases of nickel titanium, but basically you have a different uh, behavior of nickel titanium if you are working with nickel titanium at room temperature or at body temperature, and the difference in temperature can give different results of the files. Most of these studies, we have to say, were done at room temperatures, and uh, they have uh, published all these studies for a few years before somebody came there and told them, you know what, you don't have the same behavior. But today, all these studies are done today. If you take a look at the most recent studies, they are talking about doing these testings at 37 degrees. Okay, but you find basically the same results anyway. Continuous rotation versus reciprocation, longer time, safer using uh, reciprocation. So on these two issues, when we discuss about fracture, which is again, the main problem and the main concern for most of the practitioners using nickel titanium, when we talk about fracture, reciprocation is safer in terms of torsional load, safer in terms of cyclic fatigue, okay? And uh, all literature agrees on that. Now let's go and take a look at the studies that were published on patients, clinical studies. This study was done by Cunha. Well, he, he's from Sao Paulo in Brazil, and now he's, uh, he's living in Winnipeg in Canada. He immigrated there. And uh, they worked on, uh, Rodrigo Cunha worked on uh, canal preparations using wave one, okay? Not the wave one gold, because it is important to make the difference because wave one gold is even uh, more resistant, uh, more versatile, and, uh, in my opinion, much better and much safer than wave one. So that's the old wave one. And even though with the old wave one, uh, you see that they worked on, uh, and they made 2,215 canal preparations, more than 200, 2,000, uh, more than 2,200 canal preparations, and they broke only three files, only three files. And when you take a look at the protocol, and I discussed this with, with, with Cunha and with, uh, with the people from, from Sao San, San Paulo. In fact, in most of the cases, they didn't do any glide path. So I would say that without doing any glide path, they broke only three files, okay? Which is less than uh, 0 0.3 rate of fracture. Whenever you take a look at the literature about fractured instruments in rotation, you would be around between 1.5, 2% up to 5% in certain studies. In the hand of uh, experienced uh, postgrad, uh, you would be around with the publication around 1.5, 1.6, maybe 2% of fractured file using, using continuous rotation. So that would be 0 0.3 would be like five, six times lower uh, than using continuous rotation. If you take a look at another study, that, that study was done by uh, uh, Gianluca Plutino. It was done using Reciproc, same thing. And they had uh, eight fractures, uh, same thing. I was just cutting uh, and Gianluca said, and they, they didn't use any glide path either. I was discussing with them. They said, even we don't, uh, if I use the glide path, I think I would have the same rate of fractures. Personally, I don't think so. I think that if you do a proper glide path, you have less risks of breakage. But anyway, that was their choice in their study. And I would say again, that on 3,670 canal preparation, they broke only eight files, which is 0 0.47, 0 0.5, again, compared to continuous rotation in which you are around 2% uh, of uh, fracture rate. One more study, and I found this interesting study. As you know, uh, Wave 1 Gold and Reciproc are, are uh, advertised as single file systems. And uh, when we talk about single file, we don't mean single file for each canal, but we mean single patient file, uh, single use, single use for every patient. So I can uh, perfectly well, if I feel that the case will accept it, and we'll discuss about the clinical sense also, if I feel that I can do three or four canals of the same motor with the same file, I will do it, okay? Even five, six, I will do it. I don't have any issue with that. On the same patient, I open two access cavities on two molars. I have eight, nine canals. I can do 
eight, nine kilograms with the same file. Now, of course, what they did in this study is they went, they went uh, opposite to the recommendation of the manufacturer and they said, we're gonna sterilize the files and reuse them, okay? So what they did here, they worked with the same files on first molar, sterilize the file, second molar, sterilize the file, third molar, okay? So, and by doing this, they treated uh, 1130 canals. They used 120 instruments to treat more than uh, 1100 canals. And they broke only three files, reusing the files on three molars. So on an average, one file, was used to treat between nine and 12 canals, between nine and 12 canals. And they broke only three files. So if we do everything right, if we follow recommend, uh, recommendations of the uh, other manufacturers and of the designers, uh, frankly, the uh, rate of fracture is very, very low. We will keep fracturing files because we're human. We can always make a mistake, but uh, if, we use it properly, we can avoid many, many, many fractures and it's certainly one of the safest systems that you can have on the market today. The second point would be canal shapes. So briefly, canal shapes, uh, reciprocation was compared to continuous rotation in terms of ability to maintain the canal shape without any transportation, without ledging, without blockade, without uh, uh, modification of the uh, spatial uh, position of the foramen. And uh, well, all the studies, all of them have shown that you are at least, at least as good as continuous rotation. And in most of the cases, you maintain the curvatures better than continuous rotation. Now, as every study, you have to take a look at the maternal methods, see if you can compare them or not. Uh, don't forget that you can have either a sequence used in reciprocation versus continuous rotation, or you can have a full sequence in rotation versus one file in, uh, in reciprocation. Uh, you have different ways of using a file. Uh, you have different ways of assessing canal transportation, et cetera, et cetera. Nevertheless, even though if most of the studies are not comparable one, after one to another uh, from the protocol point of view, you will find that you are at least as good in terms of canal shapes, in terms of blockade, in terms of maintaining the canal shape, in terms of maintaining the foramen without any transportation in continuous, uh, in reciprocation, at least as good as continuous rotation and in most of the studies even better. Now, Debris extrusion. Uh, debris extrusion, you have pro and cons. You have some studies, basically the study of Brooklyn and Schaefer, that was the first study that showed that you might have more extrusion using uh, reciprocation. Now, you have to take a look at this uh, study and take a look at the, uh, at the protocol and the material and methods. Uh, very quickly, they worked on mandibular incisors. They compared files with different tapers and diameters. The final taper and final diameter is not the same. For example, they compared the M2 system in which the final file was a 44% taper. And they compared this to the wave one, which is a 48% taper. And they worked with a 48% taper in a mandibular incisor. Okay, so at the end of the day, they found that all systems, rotary or reciprocating system, pushed a little bit of debris apically. But the issue is in the protocol, they didn't compare apples to apples. So it's very difficult to have any conclusion from this. Knowing that if you take a look at most of the other studies, they will show either that you have the same kind of debris extrusion between reciprocation and rotation or you have more debris extrusion using rotation, especially when you use sequences. 
Now, very important thing, the way you use the file, and we'll discuss this in a minute when I'll show you the sequence and the way you use the file. When you work with a file in the root canal system, and you have a file system in which you have to push the files one after the other to length. For example, if you take the uh, race from FKG, if you take the M2 system from, uh, uh, from uh, VDW, you go with small file to length, bigger file to length, bigger file to length, bigger file to length. You don't do really a crown down. You go with one file after the other to length. So in fact, every file going to length will push a little bit of debris apically. So the first file goes to length, pushes a little bit of debris. Second file goes to length, push a little bit of debris. Third file goes to length, push a little bit of debris. And this is the main issue when you do a crown down. And one of the main advantages of doing a crown down, you open coronally and you wash out the debris. And then you go deeper and you wash out the debris. And you go deeper and you wash out the debris. And you don't try to push the length. And this is what we do using reciprocation. Of course, we're using the same file, but the same file is cutting coronally, and then you wash out the debris. You go deeper, one, two millimeters, wash out the debris, go deeper, wash out the debris. So at the end, you might push a bit of debris at the end of the treatment when you are shaping the last two or three millimeters of the canal. And doing so, you will push less debris apically than a full sequence going to length, okay? And so if you have any questions about that, we, we can elaborate on that. One concern also as the creation of cracks into the root canals and into the root, uh, into the dentine. Uh, again, most of the studies show that don't, you don't have more cracks doing uh, rotation than reciprocation. Some studies show that you have more cracks in rotation, more cracks in reciprocation. And I have to just talk to you about this study. Most of the studies were done and were based on extracted teeth. We extract like 30 teeth. 10 teeth will be used as control. 10 teeth will be shaped in rotation. 10 teeth will be shaped in reciprocation. And then you cut off the teeth and you compare. So by doing so, you destroy the samples, okay? But what uh, Didius did from Rio, they worked on uh, a system with micro CTs. Doing micro CTs allow you to have the same root as its own control. So what you see on the left is before preparation. You do micro CTs, you do 3D reconstruction of the root. Then you shape the same root with a file system. You do micro CT, you enlarge with the same system, you do micro CT, and you can compare what is happening on the same root. So you don't have any issues uh, between a control group or uh, that you destroy versus another group versus another group, etc. It's the same tooth. And what uh, the Davis found is that whenever you have the same root and you compare before and after, you will realize that before preparation, you already have cracks because of different things. It might be because of showing action before the tooth was extracted. It could be before just uh, you create the cracks when the tooth was extracted. But basically, Whenever you had cracks before, you still have cracks after, okay? So he's a firm believer uh, you don't have cracks and you don't create cracks with root canal preparation. And uh, in fact, when you take a look at survival of teeth, if we create cracks with our files, we wouldn't have so many teeth with uh, survival more than 90% after 10 years knowing that in most of the cases, when you take a look at the studies, the teeth that are lost, more than 80% of the teeth are not lost because of an endodontic problem. They are lost most of the time because you have fractures, usually coronal to apical fractures, and usually because of occlusion, Sometimes they are lost because of decay. Sometimes they are lost because you have very big posts in the canals. Anyway, so when we talk about micro cracks in the roots, there is absolutely no proof that in reciprocation, you create more cracks than the rotation first. And you have people believing that there are no cracks anyway. And if you find cracks in the studies, it's because these cracks were there 
either before you extract the tooth or when you extract the tooth, you create a crack. So that's it. Now, last thing, what we need to make sure is that we clean the canals properly, okay? Because this is what's, what it's all about. If we want to go to length, we need to go to length because we need to clean the canal to its full extent. So when we compare cleaning and disinfection of the root canal system, doing rotation or reciprocation, as long as, and this is what all the studies has found, as long as you are able to have the same final shape with the same irrigation protocol, same final shape with the same irrigation protocol, you don't have a difference between rotation or reciprocation. You won't, you won't have a difference if you're doing a sequence of files or one file only, as long as the final shape is the same. So it doesn't matter. You get the final shape. You get the final shape. If this final shape was obtained using a sequence of files in rotation or one file in rotation or multiple files in reciprocation or one file in reciprocation, as long as the final taper, final diameter is the same, as long as irrigation protocol is the same, you will not have any difference in cleaning of the root canal system, okay? So if we sum up all this, First, what we do, we eliminate screwing defect when you use reciprocation. Second, we have less risk of fracture by torsional load. And I explained to you why. Again, because we will block the movement before the file reaches uh, the level of degrees before deformation and fracture. We have less risk of breakage by cyclic fatigue. We have canal shapes that are at least as good as continuous rotation, debris extrusion, the results are conflicting. So we don't know, but of course we're not doing worse than rotation and certainly not worse than hand files. Hand filing by up and down movement has been shown to be uh, one of the most detrimental movements in the root canal in anodonics. When we talk micro cracks, again, the, the results are conflicting. And in terms of cleaning, it is at least as good as rotation. So basically, I'm not saying this is what you have to use. I'm not telling you, you have to use reciprocation. If you use rotation and you feel comfortable with rotation and you have good results with rotation, fine. But what I'm telling you is when you go through the literature, you have something else out there, something else that is safer, something else that can go faster, uh, something else that will give you very good shapes, something else that will uh, allow you to fracture less. You might want to give it a try. You don't want, it's okay, as long as you obtain good results with the current system you are using. But don't let anybody fool you, telling you, you know what, because, I've listened to lectures in which some people will uh, take out from literature the only study that will show exactly what they want you to believe. And in most of the time, they didn't even read the article. They didn't even read the material and method. They read only the abstract. They found that the abstract that the uh, results uh, suit them. They like it. And so they will talk to you about it and telling you, uh, reciprocation is good, reciprocation is not good, don't use reciprocation because of this or because of that. And you know, as usual, whenever you have a good system, a new system, most of the people don't like it, especially if you have competitors. So just let me tell you one thing. In 2011, when the first reciprocating system came out on the market, it was Wave 1 and Reciproc. Uh, most of the manufacturers, other than Densply, did not have reciprocation. So most of the opinion leaders of these other companies were saying, don't use reciprocation because you are going to have problems. You are going to push debris. You're going to break roots, et cetera, et cetera. Which in fact proved to be completely wrong. In fact, because when you take a look at the literature, this is totally, this is totally wrong. Uh, and now just take a look out there. How many copies do you have on the market doing reciprocation? Okay, so the same people 10 years ago who were telling you don't use reciprocation because it's a problem, they would tell you, you know what, we took reciprocation, but we made it better now. Okay, 
So, and this is something, if you take a look in history, this is always the same thing. They will tell you it's not good as long as they cannot copy it or as long as they don't have it. And then when they have it and they realize it's a good system, then they will copy it. But of course they need to sell you another story. So they will sell you something else telling you, oh, we did it better. We, we, we found this and we made it better. We did this and we made it better just because now, well, they need just to sell you something and they have to be a little bit different than what you have been using for the past 10 years. So, but that's it. It proves at the least that uh, we were right with that and that uh, it's a very good movement and a very good system. Anything you wanna know about this, you can take a look, even though like, they start to be a little bit uh, old now, 2015. But uh, you know what? Everything that has been published since 2015 is showing exactly the same things. Everything I have told you, everything I have summarized to you in the, in the, in the last slides, most of it has been exactly the same in the past six, seven years doing what we call Me Too studies, showing exactly the same things, okay? So nothing new under the sun. The first studies were done in the, uh, in the first four or five years. They have shown everything I've talked to you about and all the studies going out today are showing exactly the same thing. You need to have a full idea about everything I've talked about. You take these two articles and uh, they are very interesting in terms of history about reciprocation and in terms of assessment about the different things we have discussed on reciprocation. So that's for the movement, okay? We can take any file today and do reciprocation. And I will feel more comfortable anyway doing reciprocation than doing continuous rotation for all the things I've talked to you about before. Now, let's talk about the system, okay? I'm a Wave 1 Gold user. And you'll tell me, yeah, of course, because you, dis you, you participated in the design of Wave 1 Gold. Yeah, of course, I participated in the design of Wave 1 Gold. But at the same time, if, if it was not a good system, well, I would have modified it. And maybe we'll modify it because we always can improve things. And second, I wouldn't be using it every single day on my patients. I will take another system because when I work here, well, I need to be reproducible. I need to make good treatments because this is what people expect from you. You know, so I'm sure you have the same things. If you are working as a specialist, they send you cases and they just uh, look at you and see what you're doing because they want your results. So you can't afford not to be perfect in what you're doing. So the wave one gold system, why is it called gold? First, be first because the alloy that is used, is used, sorry, is a nickel titanium that was heat treated. And today this is the new fashion heat treatment on nickel titanium. Most of the companies are doing heat treatment on nickel titanium. So they can call it blue, they can call it pink, they can call it gold, they can call it whatever you like. At that time, when we, uh, when we created wave one, it was done, uh, it was made of M wire. M wire is already nickel titanium with the heat treatment. This is gold wire. It is done with heat treatment, different heat treatment that gives this color that is look, look like gold color. And then we came up with the name uh, Wave One Gold, okay? Uh, like you have Reciproc Blue, it's another kind of heat treatment. It gives blue shades on the nickel titanium. It's just uh, commercial names, okay? But basically what you have to keep in mind, it is heat treated nickel titanium that allows nickel titanium to have uh, good, uh, uh, good properties. Now, Again, as usual, when you start doing something, when everybody's going to do the same thing, and now they, they tell you we have different mixtures of different nickel titaniums. Okay, interesting. What for? Is it going to allow you to be even better? Not sure. Uh, we have to look at, on something else today, but this is another story. So Wave 1 Gold. What do we have uh, with Wave 1 Gold? We have four files. We don't have to use the four files every single time, even though if you want, and that, this is what I told you first, it is very versatile. It is versatile. You can use wave on gold as a sequence if you feel comfortable using a sequence and you don't want to use single file, okay? You feel comfortable using a sequence and you want to go yellow, red, green. You can go yellow, red, green. Now, this is not how it was designed initially. Even though in certain cases, in certain cases, I would go yellow and red or green. 
and I'll tell you when in a minute. But the idea is in most of the cases, you can shape small, I mean, constricted canals with primary. One thing you have to understand, it is an unequal movement. Why do we need an unequal movement? Because if you have equal movement, you'll never move apically. Let's say you're doing 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. So you go 90 degree in, 90 degree out, 90 degree in, 90 degree out. Won't do any good. What we have is 150, 30, 150, 30. So every time you do a cycle, 150, 30, 150, 30, 150, 30, the file will cut and move deeper. That's the first thing. So it has to be a specific movement with specific angles with unequal angles. First thing. Second thing, the file is cutting its, its way in. What I mean by that is if you take a file and you go into a canal and you don't feel that you have pressure on the file and the file is going into the canal without any, without biting into the dentine, it means that it's not efficient, it's not cutting. So in order for the file to work, the file has to be bigger, uh, smaller, bigger than the canal. The file has to be bigger than the canal. So the file is cutting its way while going in, okay? So reciprocation is unequal movement, so you can cut and go in. Second thing, the file has to be bigger than the canal. Why do we call the red the primary? Because this would be the workhorse in most of the difficult canals. When I say difficult average difficulty, this is 90, 80%, 80 of the canals you have. When you are treating premolars with uh, two roots, three roots, when you're uh, dealing with mesial roots of molars, when you're dealing with distal root of upper molar, when you're dealing with, okay, these kind of teeth in which you have small canals, most of them usually round, usually a primary is uh, the file to go with, okay? And it's a 25-7%. And it has a reverse taper. We'll see this in a minute, okay? So primary is the workhorse. Now, should you need a smaller file, you have a 27%. Should you need a bigger file, you have a 35-6%. Should you need even bigger file, you have a 45-5%. You can use them as a single file. You can use them as a sequence to enlarge the canal gradually. Okay, uh, interesting to understand is the variable regressive taper. What is a variable regressive taper? Uh, if you have an apical taper in a file and if the taper is constant taper, you can see here in red, the file will look like a pyramid and then the file will be stiff. The file will be less resistant to cyclic fatigue and the file will remove too much dentine coronally, okay? Wave one gold files, like the finishing files of Pro Taper system, these files have a variable regressive taper. So when I tell you, for example, for the primary, you have a 25, 7%, the 7% taper is only located on the first three millimeters towards the tip. And then the file, the tapers are regressive. The file diameter, the file diameter is still increasing, but it will increase less than if you have a constant taper, okay? So that will allow you to do what? That will allow you to be, to have good apical shaping. That will allow you to have more flexible file because it's not very large currently. A less tapered file is more resistant to cyclic fatigue. So it will be more resistant to cyclic fatigue along with the fact that it is a heat treated nickel titanium. And when you heat treat nickel titanium, it is more resistant to cyclic fatigue. And finally, it will remove less dentine coronally uh, than what you need, maintaining a lot of dentine in the coronal area instead of a, con a constant taper in which you will remove much more dentine coronal. Okay, so that's what is interesting. So what you need to know is 
you almost have 1.1 millimeter on uh, wave one gold primary. If you have a constant taper, if it was a constant taper, if it was a constant taper, 25, 7%, all along the file, you would almost be at 1.4. So almost 1.5 millimeter, okay? One millimeter and a half. And you are around 1.1 millimeter because you have a variable regressive taper. Okay, this is what allows you to have good flexibility, less removal of dentine coronally, because you need a deep shape, you need to enlarge so much coronally. Okay, and that is the equivalent if you take any other file on the market, which is a 25, 6%. This is even less. This is a 6%. And you see that the diameter is even larger than a 7% with a variable regressive table. Okay, fine. One more thing about the three files. What I want to show you is this. Look at the uh, diameter at D15, D16. The diameter of the 20 is 1.0, which is almost one millimeter, okay? The diameter of the uh, primary, okay, let's, let's call the yellow is the small. The primary is the red, 25. The green is what we call the medium, the 35. And the large would be the white, which is the 45. Okay, fine. What I need you to take a look at now is the diameter at the coronal part of the file, the coronal part of the file. 25, 7% primary, 1.1. 35, 6%, 1.1. A little bit larger. What does it mean? It means that on the medium, the green one, we have a regressive taper that is even more regressive than on the primary. It means that if you need to enlarge apically a canal, you can go in with a 35, 6%. You will cut only deep at the end of the canal and you will almost not cut coronally. Same thing with the 45, 5%. 1.13, which is almost, which is the same diameter as the primary. So you will cut more apically and you will not cut coronally. And this is very interesting, especially when you feel compelled or you need to open to 35, for example, a major root of motor because you were taught to do so or because you have apical resorption. You need to open more apically. You don't need to cut more coronally, all right? So that's what is interesting, again, about regressive tape. Now, without going into all these details, what we have, we also have with the system a wave on gold glider. This is a file to secure the glide path. Glide path, you go with your stainless steel hand file. We'll discuss the sequence a little bit later. Stainless steel hand file, you go in, you check the file, you scout the canal. Wave on gold glider, open the pathway. Okay, and then you go with the primary. Uh, what I'm giving you here, what you see are the diameters at D4, D8, D20, D12, and D16. The tip of the uh, Wave 1 Gold Glider, which, is, uh, which has the same cross section as the other Wave 1 files, uh, this file has uh, increasing taper. First thing. Second, it has the same cross section. It is also made of uh, nickel titanium gold. Diameter of the tip is 15 and you increase the diameter very quickly. What is interesting is to take a look at the tip, you have a 15, four millimeters away from the tip, you have a 26 in diameter, 26. Now, if after going in with the wave one gold glider, you use Wave one gold primary, which is a 25. You can understand that the file will not touch, will not touch the walls of the canals with the tip before it gets within three millimeters from length. Clear? Because four millimeters from length, the canal is already 26 in diameter. Okay? So your wave one gold primary is cutting on the walls. It's creating the shape of the canal. And then it will cut in the apical area only on the last three millimeters 
I'll show you this anyway on a video on a resin block. Okay. So the idea with the Wave One Gold Glider is you don't block the tip of your file. It cuts only laterally, and you will push less debris apically, and you have less risk of canal blockade and pushing debris. The file has, it looks like a parallelogram. It's not a rectangle. You have two angles at 95, two angles at 85. It allows you to have some kind of uh, movement a swagger movement, not really a swagger exactly like for taper next, but kind of a swagger movement in which it allows you to remove more debris currently. The files come in sterile blister. They are single use, single patient use again. I can take a primary and do four canals for the same molar, okay, with one file. And also I can use the file once on one canal because the canal was very difficult, very tough with difficult curvatures and I don't want to insist and I don't want to push it. So it will be always, whatever the recommendations are, the final judge is your clinical sense. But basically it's single use. It's not meant to be sterilized on re and reused on other patients. They will come either in assortment like this or as uh, blisters or of uh, three files or six files. They come in 21, 25, and 31 millimeter length. 31 millimeter length from time to time on incisors, most of the times on canines. 21, interesting, especially on second molars when patients cannot open very much them, their mouth. It can be very useful. And as you know, most of the, of the canals are treated with a 25. That's the case, in fact. Uh, in which we had a fracture of the root, the fracture going from mesial to distal. I must admit on this case, I, I like this case, even though uh, we ended up extracting the tooth, okay? But I wanna show the technical thing about it. That case is a complete, uh, was a crazy idea of the dentist who sent me the case and the patient. The patient had something about implants. He didn't want implants, it was like, please try to save my tooth. Even if you can keep it six more months, I'm happy to have it for six more months, okay? And uh, by, the, by that time, I would have, uh, I worked on myself and I would have more uh, acceptance of putting an implant, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, fine, I'll do the treatment, but you know that this tooth is lost. Anyway, this is not why I'm showing this case. I'm showing you this case because I wanted to show you uh, the interest of the, uh, gold alloy on these wave one gold. Whenever you put the file in a curve, whatever the file, the file goes into a curve and it will, it will want to get back to its original shape. So whenever a file is into a curve, it will always, always cut more the opposite side to the curve, especially if this file wants to get back to its original shape, okay? Uh, when you have a uh, wave one gold file and other files, but I'm talking about wave one gold, if they have this heat treatment, these files will have less tendency to straighten because they keep a permanent deformation when you curve them. So they will be much more likely to adapt to the shape of the canal and stay to the canal. And I'll show you this in a minute. So that was, the mesial canals are treated with a primary, the distal canal was treated with a 35, the medium, okay? And you see that you have no canal transportation whatsoever. This is the follow-up of the tooth. And we, in fact, even though the tooth ended up extracted, what is interesting is we gained a lot of bone. We gained a lot of bone and it helped in putting the implant a little bit later. Second thing about this, maybe we would have a different result if the guy who did the restorative, in this case, went deeper, much, much deeper with the limits of the crown uh, to have a feral effect, which he didn't do, which he didn't do in this case. So anyway, uh, the idea was to show you how you can maintain the curves in these very difficult curves. So when you pre-curve the file, the restoring force is much less restoring force is much less and you will keep a permanent deformation. 
So first, it will allow to maintain the canal shape without any transportation. Second thing, it will help you clinically, and I do this very often, put yourself in a clinical situation and you have to put the tip of your file into the mesial roots of an upper molar, okay? Mesial roots of an upper first or second molar. And then you tell the patient to open his mouth very big and you try to take the tip of your file mesially like this to put it into the canal. In a case like that, you pre-curve the file, you put it in the orifice of the canal and you start working. If you take a look at the canals like this, we had the retreatment to do on the second molar, initial treatment, primary treatment on the first molar. This is another angle. And this was done using wave one goal. You can see uh, on the distal roots, the double curves that you have on the last three millimeters. On the mesial roots, very easily, you take the file, you pre-curve, you insert the tip of the file in the canal first, of course, and then you start reciprocating, okay? It makes it much easier. One more case like this, in which it's uh, to show the interest of being able to pre-curve the file and this file to maintain the pre-curvature that you give the file. What is difficult in that case is not the measure roots, even though they look nice. What is difficult in that case what, what proved to be difficult was the separation of the distal root. On the distal root, it had one canal first, three millimeters away from the apex, it separates in two. Take a look here. What you see here is one of the canals that has already been filled with one vertical. The second canal is about to be filled. That's the best shot I got to show you how it worked. We had one common orifice, one common canal, and three millimeters away from the distal canal, we had separation in two, which you can see here, second canal. This is how it looked, okay? So why is it easier? It is easier because what you can do in a case like this, you shape the first one, and then when you need to put your file in the second canal deeper, which is at three millimeter from length, you can pre-curve the tip of the file very easily. It will maintain the curvature. You put it there and you shave the second part, the second part of the canal. Uh, in that case, very quickly, I want to show you, this is, okay. I don't know if it shows very good, but it is the palatal root of an upper molar on which we had the post and this, canal has a ledge because of the post. The ledge is palatal. The ledge is palatal. So what you need to do is to recover the canal going buckle, but you still have the ledge that is palatal. You cannot completely eliminate the ledge because it was a big ledge done with the, with the post. So after you find the canal, again, you bypass the ledge and you find your canal, then you are able to pre-curve, this is the micro opener, showing you how we can find the canal that you see here. And this is my wave one goal that is pre-curved, inserted beyond the ledge and then shape. And it is very interesting because you are able to pre-curve your file, put in beyond the ledge, of course, you have regained patency, of course, you uh, bypass the ledge with a stainless steel pre-curved file, and now you have to shape this part. So when you wanna shape the part beyond the ledge, you can pre-curve more easily these files to be able to put them there. Uh, on this case, we had a broken file measurely. You see we have a ledge also, another broken file distally which is a lentula, a paste filler. Retreatment was done on that tooth. Uh, of course, what we need to do as a first step is to remove the old filling material, then remove the broken file. Once we have done that on the mesial root, we have to recover the canal and shape it. And you know that if you take any mechanical file, 
it will go in the ledge every time. So once you have removed the broken file, you need to pre-curve files and go into the canal, bypassing the ledge. In that case, pre-curving the wave one allows you to shape this part that is deeper than the ledge. You see the lateral canal, the frication, and the lateral canal that is very high uh, on the distal part of the tooth. Now let's see how to use it. Still have a few slides and we'll be done. I will talk like an hour. I would be, I would have talked like an hour and 15 or 20 minutes and leave you like 10, 15 minutes for questions if you wish to. First step is to scout and establish a glide path. Then we'll secure the glide path using the uh, gold glider. Then we will shape the coronal part of the tooth. Once we have shaped the coronal part of the tooth, we will establish working length and uh, have a glide path apically. Then we'll secure this glide path apically using wave one gold glider. Then we will shape the apical part. So again, we scout with a stainless steel hand file as deep as the file wants to go. If it goes to length, fine. If it doesn't go to length, don't push. You secure this glide path you have obtained with your stainless steel hand file using wave one gold glider. And then you shape. With which file you shape? With the red. And then with the red, and then with the red, and deeper with the red, until you reach length. Once you have reached length, should you need to enlarge more, because the apical part of the, of the canal is larger than 25, you can use the 35, the medium. Or you know that you have two different schools of thought. Some schools will tell you you have to enlarge typically every single time to 35 minimum and you feel more comfortable opening 35 because you consider that 25 is not enough, then you take the medium and you go to length if you wish to do so. Have no problem with that. I have no issue with that. And it happens to me to do it more and more often. Take a 35 to length. And you will see in a minute that when you have shaped the canals using the primary, which is again a 25, 7%, it will take you less than a second to take a 35, the medium to length. One second, you'll see that. Now, that is uh, a double curved canal that I will shape. Very uh, different things I want to show you. Well, the first thing is very quickly, make sure that you have a glide path. Any nickel titanium file need a glide path first. I know that some people <laughs> say we don't need glide path, don't do glide path. Uh, in many cases, I use, I'm going to tell you, in many cases, I would take mechanical files and do glide path immediately. But I have 20 plus years experience with nickel titanium, so I know when to stop. If you're not very familiar, go with a stainless steel hand file. It takes you a fraction of a second to make sure that you have a glide path. Then secure this glide path using wave one gold glider. In a few strokes, you get your wave one gold glider to length, irrigate, recapitulate, irrigate. Okay, and then we're done with the wave one gold glider. What I want you to take a look at here is two things. First, you are gonna start cutting and you will see that the tip is not cutting. Look where the cutting action is, more coronally. The tip is not cutting. Second thing I want you to take a look at is like one, two, three, get out. Irrigate, recapitulate, irrigate, okay? By doing so, you eliminate the debris. If you keep pushing up and down, up and down, up and down, you will start packing the debris apically. You don't want to do that. One, two, three, out. Irrigate, recapitulate, irrigate. Don't push the file. The file has to work less than five, six seconds every time. Okay? Irrigate, recapitulate, irrigate. We still have like one, two strokes. We will be to length. We will be at length. And it's going to be like one, two. We are at length. You get out. You're done. Irrigate, recapitulate, irrigate. You wish to use ultrasonics, use ultrasonics. You need to use sonics, use sonics. You need to use whatever system you will use to irrigate. Well, do it now. And you're done with your shape in one file. You take the dedicated cones, which I will talk to you in a minute. Interesting cones also because they have come from fit cone. They have regressive taper also. These cones that come with the system also have regressive taper, okay? And you can fit the cones. So in less than one to two minutes, you would have shaped a canal. 
in less than one or two minutes, you would have shaped a canal. Then it will give you plenty of time for irrigation, okay? So take advantage of that time to irrigate the canal and clean it more and more because you have gained the time during the shaping procedure. Look at that, four canals done with primary, okay? Minimal opening coronally, good shape apically, a lot of time for irrigation and filling. Protocol, stainless steel, wear one gold glider, primary. What I was talking to you about is this. We have, we can shape almost any canal in less than a minute or two minutes. This is what we used to do. Access, we shape in terms of time dedicated to every step. Irrigation obturation. Today we have like access, we shape. Plenty more time for irrigation. Remember that irrigation is the most efficient when you have done your shape. When, once you have done the shape, you are able to get your irrigation down, you are able to get your needles down, you are able to get your whatever. Whatever system you use, it will be mostly efficient at the end of the shaping procedure. So what you need to do is to get done with the shaping as fast as possible to get irrigation down and spend time. And this is why this system, except that it is very safe, except that you have less files, it will allow you to ship quickly, and then you will get more time for irrigation. So, hand file, glider, if you don't go to length, don't force, shape with the primary to this length. Irrigate, take your hand file again, go to length, glider to length, shape, irrigate, 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 irrigate. Go into distal, hand file goes easily, Lighter goes easily. Red goes easily. You need to open more. You want to go with the green, go with the green. You go with the red if you need to. And you fill lateral canals all over the place. So if you have a bigger apex and you need larger files, of course you don't stop at primary. You do primary. If you have cut enough and you feel it's sufficient, you're done. You need to open more, you have more files to do so. In a case like this, in which I have a double curve on this maxillary premolar, I might use the yellow first. Stainless steel hand file, glider, yellow, then red. So if you take a primary, the red, and you feel it has a hard time going around the curve, don't force it. You need to open first the space with the yellow, open the space with the yellow. In these cases, I would use a yellow. I don't use the yellow every time. I will use it if I find that it's a very difficult canal and if the, the, the red, the primary, has a hard time going around the curve. So you will open the pathway and then you will be using the system as a sequence. Now, you need to enlarge more apically. Tuck, you're done and you have opened your canal with a 35. So 25 to length, primary, 7%. You need to enlarge more, take the 35, it will take you less than a second to be there. And this is the dedicated cone. On a case like this, measles and the distals done with the primary, palatal is larger, of course it is larger, you need a larger file. You can go with the, with the large, with the usual 45, 5%. It's a system based, you have the files, you have the cones. Again, what is interesting with the cones, these cones, these cones have a reverse taper also. If you have a regressive tapered preparation and you put in this preparation, a continuous tapered cone, then the cone will fit coronally, will fit and block coronally, and apically it will not fit. That's why it is interesting to take the same cones because it will allow you 
they have also regressive taper. So whenever you have a tuck back, you know that your tuck back is only apical. These two the patient came in having pulpitis on both these, completely crazy, completely crazy. Anyway, so, sorry, let me go back on that one. And look at that. Treatment done, one, two, three, four, five, seven canals, one session, one, two files. And in these cases, if again, apical part of the canal is larger than 25, I don't hesitate. I take the 35 and open more apically. So just to finish with that, if we sum up everything, yes, it is easy to learn. It is easy to use. Most of the studies have shown so. When we do a file, again, we need to make sure that you are able to use it safely, properly. And I think one of the latest studies I didn't, I didn't mention here, they showed that if you do just like six resin blocks, six canals, you are very proficient using Wave 1 Gold. It is safe, probably safer than all other systems today on the market. It is efficient. It allows you to shape very properly your canals very quickly, and then gives you plenty of time for irrigation. And it's cost effective. Why is it cost effective? Even though it's single file, even though it's single use, even though you don't have to use it again on a patient, you gain time on the treatment. What is expensive in the practice is the time you use, and time is money in the practice. So if I shape canals quickly, plenty of time for irrigation, and still I can have one more patient per day, okay? And this is cost effective. It's not by taking one file and saying, oh, it's 10 bucks and it's gonna be like $11 and this one is 15 euros and I'm gonna take a look at it, clean it and count how many times I have used it. Don't forget cyclic fatigue is building up in a file. Cyclic fatigue is something that you cannot, you cannot monitor today. Maybe one day we'll have a system to monitor cyclic fatigue from the up. So when you take a look at a file at the end of the preparation and you say, oh, I'm going to, this file is a file I can clean. I'm going to sterilize it and reuse it because it's not deformed. Deformation is torsional load. Deformation is not cyclic fatigue. Cyclic fatigue, you cannot see. And the file can have built up a lot of cyclic fatigue. And next time you use it, it will break very quickly even without pressure, because you don't know how much cyclic Sadiq have built up in, has built up in a file. Safest way for us, for the patients, we don't want to break a file. We still break files. We have to reduce this to the maximum. System is safe, single use is safer. Uh, everything I've talked to you about, if you need any, uh, take a look at, uh, at some videos that we uh, we have shot a few years back with uh, before our friend I did this with uh, one of my friends Jim Gray passed away from COVID. He was in charge of uh, doing the videos and all the uh, teaching stuff at Densply. He used to be in Tulsa, and he came here to my practice and we spent some time and we did all these videos. You can find them on YouTube, uh, Wave One Gold, and you have different clips on teeth, on cases, in which case we can use this, which case we use this file, which case we use that file. If they can be of any help, you can go look for them. Uh, and uh, you again, my email address, I'll be more than happy to address any question you would have. And again, you need to come to Paris now that we can travel again. You're more than welcome to spend some time with me at the practice. I wanna thank you again for uh, spending your time with me this afternoon. If you have any questions, we still have like, at least 10 minutes for questions. I'd be more than happy to answer questions. So, are we okay? Yes, we are very much okay. You're I, well I can't in hear time. You. Oh, you cannot hear me? Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, okay. I can't, I can't hear you, my fault. I can't hear you because uh, I cut the, the voice, the sound because of the sound I had on my videos. My fault. No, that's, that's okay. Uh, we are very much in time. So, so th this is great. Uh, I would like to thank you for your uh, presentation, of course. If anybody has any questions, you can answer. You can ask them in the Q&A in the bottom of your screen. We will give them a couple minutes because sometimes it takes a couple minutes before uh, people 
um, are asking the questions. Okay. In the meantime, I would like to share our questionnaire with our participants so they uh, hopefully can let us know how they are uh, experiencing this webinar. Um, it's now uh, in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I would really like to thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting. Yeah, nice. Um, thank you. Uh, one th uh, how can I, would you, you will ask me the question or I will see the questions? Uh, I will ask you the questions if they are coming in. Because um, I, can't, I can't see them on my screen. No, I think that's one of my roles uh, the, um, as, a, as a host over here. Okay. Ah, there's one question. I've been using ProTaper Gold. Is Wave on Gold a better system? Is it advisable to have both systems in the practice? Uh, I have both systems in the practice and I use uh, Wave on Gold 99.9% uh, .9 of the cases. Uh, we can obtain exactly uh, the same results. In Wave on Gold, what you, uh, with Wave on Gold, you have the equivalent of the finishing file too. I didn't have time to go through the whole history of how this was uh, created, but basically Hassan Yared is a ProTaper user, and he was the first one to advocate the use of a single file in reciprocation instead of a, of, uh, a sequence. And the first lecture and the first, uh, sorry, paper he published in International Link Journal was using finishing file two of the ProTaper system. So plus or minus finishing file two of the ProTaper gold you're using is a 25 8% taper. Wave on gold is a 25% taper, almost nothing as a difference, typically. And you are going to obtain the same shape, the same shape, apically, using one file instead of four files. Now, exactly the same way I told you before. If you feel comfortable with your Pro Taper Gold and you have very nice shapes and you don't have any issues with that and you're happy using four files, I don't have an issue with that. I've used Pro Taper Universal for many years. I have Pro Taper Gold at the practice. I don't use it. Personally, I find it faster, easier, with less mess and less files to take care about with one file instead of four files. So again, the final shape you will get apically with Wave on Gold is the equivalent to the final shape you will get after using shaping file one, shaping file two, finishing file one, finishing file two of the Pro Taper Gold system. So instead of four files, one file. Second thing, with the Pro Taper Gold system coronally, coronally, you probably will have a little bit more enlargement than what you have with Wave One Gold. But again, you have nice shapes, you like it, don't change. You wanna give it a try? Why not? Thank you very much for answering this question. Uh, what the what is the difference between Wave on Gold Glider and Pro, Pro Glider besides the movement? Which one is safer for tight canals? Say again between Wave on Gold Glider and and a Pro Glider. Okay, well, totally different. Uh, in the with the idea, of course, the idea is being to secure the glide path that you have obtained before using shaping files. Okay, uh, what. Uh, the glider, the pro glider, was designed to go into the canal before you use pro taper next, or pro taper if you wish, but basically more pro taper next. The tip is 16. You have uh, it's uh, M wire nickel nickel titanium, and it is a rotary file. Now, if we go back to history, we did wave one for we had wave one first M wire. Then that was in 2011. Then 2015, we did wave one gold. And we didn't have, we did not have a glider file. And we insisted with then to create a glider file, which, which looked, uh, well, you know, it's just, it would be necessary and it would be logical to have a reciprocating uh, glider file. And in the beginning, they were reluctant. They didn't want to add one more file. So what we advocated first was the use of pro glider. Okay, so we did stainless steel hand file, pro glider, and then primary in reciprocation. But it sounds much more logical to have a reciprocating file into a reciprocating system 
because when you have a reciprocating file, you have less cyclic fatigue than rotary. ProGlider is rotary. Uh, ProGlider is M wire. When you're using Wave One Gold, you have heat treatment that is different. It is uh, more resistant to cyclic fatigue. And uh, also one thing we realized is that when we were doing the hands-on at the beginning, uh, practitioners started using a rotary plug glider and then they took the wave one and they, were, they forgot to push the button to go from rotation to reciprocation and it didn't make any sense. So you feel comfortable with the pro glider, it will work perfectly fine. Wave on gold glider is, in my opinion, safer because it is reciprocation, safer because it's uh, gold alloy, and uh, you avoid these mistakes in going from rotation to reciprocation because you use one in rotary, one in reciprocation. You have a full system in reciprocation. I don't hear you, Jackie. You, you probably, you probably, your microphone is not working. You probably hit the button or something. Yeah, I unmuted myself because it's raining here. Okay. Um, um, does the wave on gold lend itself to single cone fill with bio root root canal shaping? Yeah, of course you can do that. And in fact, there were the, uh, there was a testing uh, in in the university here in Paris, in Garancière University, where uh, when where we had the, the European uh, uh, postgraduate program that was. Uh, uh, that was designed, in fact, and, and directed by my friend Stefan Simon, that you probably heard about. Uh, Stefan worked a lot on bioceramics. And uh, what he did also is uh, we tried to, uh, they tried to do this uh, working with uh, Wave One Gold, single cone with bioceramics uh, for students because it was much easier, much faster. And they did studies on patient which was a preliminary study in which they compared wave on gold, uh, a single cone with bioceramics versus wave on gold, warm vertical data Persia with another sealer, uh, which was pulp canal sealer, and they didn't find any difference in results. So yes, absolutely, you can do that. Okay, that seems to be the last question that I received. Okay. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> uh, can, can you use wave on gold to remove uh, GP from filled root fillings, any specific file? Oh, very, very good question. Yeah, thank you. I didn't address uh, retreatment. Uh, yes, you can, even though this is not, I think the most efficient way to do it, but you can, and I don't do it for one single reason. Uh, this file comes as, a sterile file, more expensive than a normal file. I don't want to contaminate it and contaminate this file using it into old filling material that is contaminated by bacteria when you're doing the retreatment. So usually what I do is I use uh, ultrasonics to remove all the old filling material from the coronal part of the canal using ET20, ET25 tips. I can use uh, then a rotary file, I would I usually use the pro taper retreatment file, but you can use any file you like to remove material down from the canal. And then what I will do is once I have bypassed the ledge, once I have reached working length, once I have removed the old filling material with another file that is much less expensive, that is, you know, I don't care about really, it's just any file remove the material, then I will shape the apical part using wave one gold, which is still clean, fresh, going out from the box, sterile. So that's why I don't do it. But can you remove with Persia? Yes, you can. I don't like to do it for the reasons I told you about. Okay, maybe we should wait before I say it's the last question again. We can, we can. Yeah, we'll see, we're right on time, huh? Now yeah. we're yeah, perfect. Thanks. Per perfect timing. Just the way we love it.
Anyway, if you think about any question later, please let me know my email address, okay? Don't worry. Yes, then uh, I will send uh, questions to your email address. Oh, yes. one question came in, no? Yeah. Why not have an opener like SX or XA, but then in reciproc with Raven Gold sequence? Uh, no, we don't. In the sequence, there is no. Uh, in the sequence, there is no opener. We don't have an opener in the sequence. And uh, if I need to use an opener, I would use either the S6 or uh, I have an S6 on my table. And from time to time, I will use it. Uh, on the first two, three millimeters, just to make sure that I have opened the coronal parts of the canal, just to make it easier than to put hand files in. But uh, there is no opener. Knowing that the S6 is quite large coronally, uh, it's 1.2, even more than 1.2 coronally. So if you push it a little bit too hard in the, in the canal, especially on major roots of motor, you can remove a lot of dentine coronally. But it's a, it's a nice file that I like. Uh, so the S6 in gold, uh, uh, I like it very nice, very much, and I always have one available in case I need it. But in reality, you don't really need to. Okay. No more questions from our audience. Good. And uh, I, I just would like to thank you again. The webinar thank has you, been, the, for the webinar. All this for the technique. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I did, I did, the, I did the easy part. You did the hard part. <laughs> uh, I've recorded the webinar so everybody can review it again when they would like to in their own time. Uh, I will send it probably on Tuesday in a thank you email. I can also uh, send it to you again. Yep. Um, probably you would like that. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I would like to wish everybody a really nice weekend. Thank you. Good weekend, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks for bye -bye. joining. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Bye. Salut, Michel. À bientôt.